Hello everybody, I'm Sergio Paez. Welcome to another live chat. And I got a special guest for us today. Spiros, let me bring you up, buddy. How are you? Welcome. Hello. This is Spiros Yunis. Man, we go way back. We actually, I had the great pleasure of working with this guy at Lucasfilm for many years. And I was trying to think of how to, how to intro you because uh, this, we're gonna be talking about AI in storyboarding and storytelling and just AI in general because AI art is like this hot button topic that people are getting all heated about. And I wanted to get down to the, down to the bottom of it. And I, we were thinking like, well, who could we ask to come on here? And I was like, let's ask Spiros because out of all the guys that I know, my friend, you like your art skills, your creative skills, and then your like analytical skills are, are like, if I didn't know you better, I'd think you were an AI robot. And so that's why I'm going to bring you on because you're going to really dissect this stuff for us. <laughs> but so I should give a little bit of background and I'll let you, I'll let you chime in <laughs> about who you are and where you come from. So I know that you've been in the industry for many, many years. You're a certain veteran, a huge veteran. And you've been at like, I, I, you've, you've worked on like a ton of features, right? This is, I almost forget this when I, when I was working with you, I was like, man, you, you worked at DreamWorks, you were on Coraline, you were on like Kung Fu Panda. And uh, we worked a number of years together on the Clone Wars series and Rebels and all that, uh, tons of fun. And we, we had to deal with a lot of technology there. But, um, and then you've gone on to do other like tech related things. I mean, your, your resume is like huge and awesome. So maybe I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself and, and tell the people who you are and, uh, and just a little bit about yourself. How, how about that? <laughs> All right, thank, thank you so much for the intro. It's so, so odd not to be able to see the audience. Um, do we <laughs> yeah, know how many people have uh, logged in? Just we got about a hundred people on right now. Oh and my see, oh, God. Yeah, we should say hi. Oh man, I recognize a bunch of these people. All right. Awesome. Uh, great to see you guys, Michael. And we got Jean-Claude. Hey buddy. And let's say, I think we even, did I see Douglas Lovelace is in the house here? We both know Doug. Hey Doug. Wonderful, wonderful. So anyway, sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to you guys. I'll, I'll Thanks for joining us, by the way. Oh, pleasure. I can, uh, and, and welcome everybody. And uh, I, just to understand the format, uh, are we going to be doing Q&A at, at some point? Oh, absolutely. Or? Yeah, that's, I should mention that too. So one of the good things, if you guys are seeing us on the event page, please go ahead and click that share button and, and send this out because we want people to, to build a community and actually talk about this stuff. We're going to try and get to the bottom of AI art in general, but it's really, I'm all about the networking and, and growing and learning. And then we're definitely going to have, we're going to leave a, a, um, a time at the end to have question and answer. So Spiros and I are going to like break down what we think about AI. And this, I wanted to pick your brain about this. Sure. Um, so yeah, absolutely. You guys hold your questions. You can chat away and, uh, and do that in, in the chat feature and we'll pull those up uh, as we get to them. But anyway, getting back to you, Spiros, tell us a little bit more about yourself. <laughs> so yeah, a, a, very, a, a very brief bio is that uh, um, I was born and raised in, in Greece and I came to the US when I was uh, uh, 17 years old uh, and I started working right out of school. My first job was at Lucasfilm actually. Uh, and But I, I, um, I, I went uh, back to Los Angeles uh, shortly afterwards uh, because I thought that that's where most of the action is. And uh, I worked for uh, some of the big studios in LA, like uh, uh, DreamWorks and uh, Sony as a, as a story artist. Uh, that was definitely my passion. I was uh, um, uh, very much hyper-specializing and the, the topic of hyper-specialization will factor into the conversation about yeah. AI, actually. I um, I and uh -huh. yeah, and uh, um, uh, I, I worked on, on a bunch of features like the ones you mentioned. Uh, it was an amazing experience. Um, I should say that at, at that 10 year mark though, um, I, uh, and I, I've, I've been talking to so many, I went to CalArts uh, and I graduated with so many amazing uh, artists that to this day, they, they, they play all these uh, wonderful roles at all these major companies and studios. Um, uh, so many of my friends, um, so many of my classmates ended up at Pixar. And when I was in the Bay Area, I would constantly talk to them. And what I noticed was that at, at about the 10 year mark, uh, even though everybody was very grateful about um, the industry and uh, this very creative career, at the same time, we were starting to get concerned um, about uh, how stagnant it can be 
uh, how much it can lack in, in mobility uh, and opportunity within the studio system, um, how creatively things uh, are becoming more derivative, more repetitive over time. Um, and because of it, quite a few of us um, became more antsy and started looking into alternatives, <laughs> Start, yes. uh, started experimenting more uh, with uh, a different career paths uh, instead of the, I think, initial intention we all had of being very focused on, on the creative side and um, uh, story in particular. Uh, and uh, uh, that's, that's when I joined Lucasfilm and that's when I met um, uh, uh, Sergio. Um, and again, I'm only uh, getting into details that may be, re be relevant later on when it comes to the topic of AI. Totally. Uh, at, at, uh, at, at, at Lucasfilm, uh, at Lucasfilm, it, it, was, it was the first time that uh, uh, we had to not do storyboards. And there was this push for a brand new method and a brand new set of tools when it comes to story development, uh, uh, 3D tools, um, which was um, uh, unthinkable. Uh, and uh, then we ended up diving into it. We were forced into it. And uh, long story short, it ended up proving to be this incredible innovation. And that's when I started that's when I experienced for the first time uh, uh, the phenomenon that an entire industry, an entire group of people can be very set in their ways. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. so, so artists much. don't like change, huh? Isn't that funny? It's, Isn't not, that it's, not, just, it's not just artists. It's, uh, you see that in every industry. Um, uh, it, it's very common that, that people become so used to uh, uh, um, their ways that even when there's a, an opportunity to do things better, uh, they don't see it, or even if they do see it, they're very resistant to it. Um, um, and and I, I also um, um, became acquainted with uh, the whole Bay Area culture, the whole Silicon Valley culture, uh, and uh, their emphasis on, on um, technology and business in, in uh, pushing for these innovations. Uh, and also at the same time, I had the opportunity to um, get into this project uh, that uh, was meant to prove that technology is, is, is heading in such a direction that it will be possible to set up very complicated animation productions entirely online uh, and uh, be able to plug talent from anywhere in the world. Uh, and have a remote workforce. This is 2008, 2009. Yeah, you were like, I, I know you and a handful of other people that I met were just cutting edge with this stuff back when the technology was, was very uh, early. This was all pre-pandemic and like, yeah. you know, now people are remote working, all that stuff. They seem to have figured it out. But uh, the tech, almost like that you had started, you laid down those tracks for people to actually do some stuff later on. <laughs> well, I, I, ironically, uh, some of the uh, the people that I was uh, uh, begging back then to try um, this this production method, um, they were not interested or even laughing at it. Uh, those same people, I I now find myself uh, trying to convince that they've gone too far in the opposite direction. But that's a whole other conversation. So um, after, after a total of uh, seven years uh, at Lucasfilm, I quit. Uh, and uh, um, oddly, at that point, I transitioned into production. And I started taking production jobs, uh, most of them in the startup world, actually, um, with, um, um, and, and, and because of it, I, I, I tried my hand into, I tried my hand in things like, uh, um, uh, interactive storytelling. Um, I, I built an NFT collection for a character called Aku that uh, 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 was very popular in the NFT world. Uh, was it last, last year? Um, Aku ended up on the cover of Time magazine. Um, I, uh, I've had a lot of... Um, um, I had the opportunity to um, talk to a lot of experts when it comes to Web3. Um, uh, which is 
one of, I think, the more important trends uh, going forward. And uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's that's the you you are well versed in tech. Like this is this is one of the reasons why we brought you on here, and it's just to talk about it. But you know, for for those of you guys listening, one thank you by the way for for joining us again, and all everybody who's, who's watching right now. I wanted to bring this up, so. Uh, this is a hot button topic. We're going to get we're going to get down to it, but I thought we'd start off with this. Okay, what is AI art for those people who may not understand what's going on and what what this whole artificial intelligence revolution that's come in there? Now, let me let me start this off. The way I understand it, right, is that you that it's a big aggregator of information that is able to um, sift it down and export out and and basically give you and feed the user. A, a, another piece of information that has been packaged, right? Uh, is that a good insp so let me let me give an example for this. Now I'm sure most of you have seen this that you can chat something in and say give me um, give me a summary of of a novel and it will give you like a, a critique or a you know paragraph summary because this system aggregator the machine is able to get that information and spit it out. In terms of AI art, what what is happening is it's aggregating images, which is actually pretty magic, right? This is like magic technology that we have here uh, from different, so it could take different styles, let's say a style Picasso, and you, you give it prompts to the machine and it will spit out a result, okay? Now, right. why people are bent out of shape, and we can get into this there. Now, um, is, that, is that a decent summary of what AI art is, Spiros? Well, it will look uh, very, again, um, um, very brief summary of, what AI is, um, in, instead of uh, um, you, you can you can have a computer run a program, which is basically to going through a recipe, an algorithm, right, a set of yeah. instructions. Yeah, that's the like code. Uh, Everybody's used to that, right? Uh, that's that's one approach. But another approach is to um, um, inside the computer build this neural network. It's like building an artificial mind, uh, and um, um, with uh, um, Few in, with limited instructions, uh, you can have this mind um, uh, train on, uh, on on data, uh, and then uh, figure out how to accomplish certain goals. Um, and um, um, that, as a concept, has been around for decades. But the reason why uh, AI has uh, experienced an, an explosion in uh, recent years is because, uh, for the first time, we have oceans of data that uh, artificial intelligence can train on uh, and computer power uh, continues to, to increase in order to be able to uh, process that kind of data um, and, and have meaningful outputs. Uh, and obviously in the last few months, this, this has had uh, quite an effect on art, but yeah, that's how and I would summarize it. So then I wanted to bring up this, um, what are some of the tools that are out there for AI uh, storytelling? Well, I guess you could say AI art in general. And I think, you know, if you did a web search, most people can find these things, but OpenAI seems to be the most popular one, which has chat GPT, which is essentially a, a chat engine that will, right. will come up with text prompts um, based on what you, what you give it. There's also Midjourney, which is the one that will produce AI art for you. Now, it's not perfect, right? If, and I'll, I'll show some examples when I did a couple of searches. Um, do you know any other tools that, uh, that the user should be familiar with? Uh, uh, DALI, that, that was part of AI, uh, right. was the first one to make a splash, and then, and then mid, yeah, and then uh, uh, Midjourney um, uh, was able to generate even more impressive uh, images in terms of the, the draftsmanship. Um, some of the, uh, one can expect to have, uh, to see an explosion of, uh, such tools in the coming months. Uh, Adobe came up with one, uh, called Firefly. Um, it is, it is particularly interesting because they've made, uh, quite an effort to ensure that the, that the, um, the art that the AI is training on is uh, ethically sourced. Um, and the other interesting development is that there, are, there is now the option for people to 
install these models locally on uh, on their machine and uh, and modify them to uh, uh, to do uh, very specific tasks instead of uh, uh, more more general art generation uh, through communication with with a server. Uh, like this morning, this engineer friend of mine sent me uh, all these images of uh, um, uh, um, submarines for children's books. Like he 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 installed a model on on his computer specifically to generate children's book images and would give it a prompt like make me submarines for children's books, and you would have that particular style. Um, <laughs> That's yeah. that's so, the, the, these these are the tools I'm aware they're, of. They're they're powerful tools, right? And this is why people are somewhat scared of what could come out of it. But I wanted to bring this up. I thought this was funny. A friend of mine sent me this. Let me see, see if I can get this all on screen here. This was uh, a buddy of mine put my name into Chat GPT. Okay, and I'll, for those of you who know me, I'll I'll uh, you know this is this is to me this is funny. I read this. I was like, wow. Okay, so let me read it to to the crowd here. I read it to Spiros is Sergio Paez is a Mexican-American animator and director known for his work in the animation industry. He was born in Mexico City, really, okay. Raised in Los Angeles, California. Oh, I didn't know that one either. Paez began his career in animation in 1990s, working as a storyboard artist and animator on several TV shows and movies, including Ren and Stimpy, Dexter's Lab, The Powerpuff Girls, supervising director on Samurai Jack. Man, I'm pretty awesome. And then uh, Batman, Avatar The Last, ben Last Airbender, I was a storyboard artist on Lion King and Hercules, and I served a story artist and animator on Road to El Dorado. <laughs> okay, and then Paya's work has been recognized with several awards, wow, including multiple primetime Emmy Awards for his work on Avatar The Last Airbender and Young Justice. And then this is the last line I, I thought was, was hilarious too. He has also been involved in mentoring and teaching young animators and has served as a guest speaker and lecturer at several colleges and universities. Now. The question here for anybody watching or for you, Spiros, is what part of this is accurate and what part is not? <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I didn't know you did all these things. Man, I'm pretty, I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> I, 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 I had all these misconceptions about you, according to this. So, yeah, I, the only thing that I'll just say that I got right is the last line <laughs> that I had been mentoring and teaching, you know, artists because... I've been doing the educational thing for a number of years now. So um, the rest of it is, I mean, I'd love to think that I worked on, you know, The Lion King and <laughs> The Road to El Dorado and all those films, but. Uh, what, no. what, was the, what, was the, what was the prompt? Was the prompt to uh, search? Uh, uh, did the person that uh, generated this ask the AI to search the internet and, and pull information about you and uh, put this together? Or did the person yeah. just, just gave a name that sounds uh, Latin? And, and also mentioned that you're an animator and then uh, uh, ChatGPT thought it should just make up uh, a, a, a biography based on these assumptions. Uh, I, I don't know, I have to find out. I think the prompt was something like, do a bio on Sergio Paez. Now I know there are other people with my same name, which might seem weird, but yeah, it's true. And, um, and yeah, so somebody, you know, you know, I'll, <laughs> this, is, this is funny, I'll bring this up, uh, Blue, Bloop boop. It says it used Sergio's pa Sergio Pablos's portfolio. So I, so Sergio Pablos, for those of you who don't know, is a is a director and artist and animator in Spain. I actually worked at his studio way back when. He did the Klaus movie recently, and so it, I think it's just combining a number of people that either are named Sergio or are named Pias. <laughs> but it got it wrong basically, except for that last line. <laughs> I thought right. that was uh, hilarious. I don't think even Sergio Pablos worked on some of these films. So. It's, uh, it's not even accurate in that sense. But so this is where I, I bring this up just kind of funny, like, okay, it's, it, got the, it got the general genre right, but it didn't get the rest of it right. So it's not, the tools aren't all there yet, which is kind of what I want to lead to this next question. And we were talking about this before we got on, on live here, is the different kind of uh, journeys and revolutions in the industry that we've had, and I guess just in life in general, of, of isn't this um, tech, technology really? Like, so I mentioned, I put up here photography, right? And then what comes to related to us is digital paint, 3D animation, 
and I was even thinking about this as I was writing was um, the Cintiq to me was a revolution. I'm, you know, this Cintiq that this Edge is a Cintiq monitor that when I first saw this, I was like, ah, oh, I'm drawing on paper. Like I'm one of these old guys that was still around when we were doing it on paper. And then when I started doing it, I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is, this is pretty awesome. And of course I had to change and adjust. And the same thing happened with, with you and me, or uh, I don't know in the same way, but when we were doing uh, 3D storyboards at Lucasfilm, I was doing the 2D stuff. And I was like, ah, you know, I, 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 can, I can do this faster than the 3D. And then the 3D tools came out and we were like, oh, okay, wait a minute. There's, at least I was, I changed my tune because I saw the potential for this technology. So what, what do you think of these trends and, and how people have reacted to them when they come out? So my opinion is that AI is another one. What are we gonna do about it? Right, so let me, let me try and approach this from the macro uh, historically to the micro, uh, the particular case of AI. Um, so when, when one looks at uh, the, the technological trends uh, throughout history, it's important to keep in mind that there is definitely job destruction uh, along the way. And it, it is very challenging for uh, the people whose uh, job is taken away doubt but um, overall the um, the advancements on on society as a whole are unbelievable they're tremendous um, we, we shouldn't take for granted the fact that there's more than eight billion people in the world today and uh, 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 a, a greater um, percentage than ever before of that human population has pretty high living standards. That was not the case for, for centuries and, and millennia. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the reason why we, we do enjoy these unbelievably high, so many of us enjoy these, uh, these unbelievably high uh, living standards is, is largely because of technological advancements. Those same technological advancements that in the short term uh, cause tremendous disruption. Um, nobody is a, is a prophet, of course. Uh, nobody can predict the future. Uh, maybe AI is the type of technological advancement that uh, uh, is, is different from previous technological advancements, but uh, more, more likely that's not the case. More likely it's just another uh, push. So it's all hype. Is, huh? is what's going on? Is it all hype? The, all this fear and I, I don't think it's so know, hype. Well, there's, Skynet there's, is coming. Uh, well, eventually it is. Uh, I think. Um, <laughs> I, so here are some premises about technology that I don't think have changed. Um, uh, first of all, the, the, there is there is a, a law called, called I think it's called Amara's law, if I remember correctly. Amara was a computer scientist that observed this phenomenon where in the short term, when there's a technological breakthrough in the short term, it is overestimated. And in the long term, it is uh, underestimated. Uh, and oh, it, it seems to me like uh, uh, this is certainly what is happening with uh, AI right now. People are, are overreacting. Uh, but you, can, you, can, you should also uh, expect that after they realize uh, 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 after we realize our overreaction, then you can expect a period where we uh, dismiss AI when in fact the AI, AI continues to, to develop and shows uh, uh, real and tremendous impact in, in the long term and that catches most, most people off guard. Um, what else? Um, yeah, and, you know, I, I want to bring this up too because... Uh, you know, if you guys are watching us on our event page, this is, this is what we have here. If you scroll down a little bit, we, we added a poll and we'd love for you guys to participate in this poll. We'll get to the results at the end of the chat here um, before we get off. But uh, there's just a couple quick questions about the poll, but it'd be nice to, to get your, your reactions, you know, everybody who's watching to, uh, to see what you think about what AI is gonna do in the story, storyboard industry or storytelling uh, industry. And then we can, we can, we'll see the results and then we'll see if that still aligns with, with what, um, 
with what we think by the end of this, this chat. So anyway, getting back to this discussion of the trends, right? Right. Uh, so I, I remember this uh, very clearly because I was part of it is the 3D from, from 2D animation to 3D animation. I was just coming out of school and I really wanted to do 2D animation and 3D animation was coming into vogue and it, you know, Toy Story and all these films when they first came out were revolutionary and, and great. I still think Toy Story is a really, really solid movie, even though it kind of looks dated with the tech, but the, the storytelling was really, really solid. Right. And the, you know, a bunch of 2D animators were all bent out of shape and they said, yeah, yeah. People, you know, people... oh, I can't believe this is happening. And you know, it's, it's no good. This, this thing is bad. And I think well, what has happened now, it seems like that's no longer a conversation that people are having. Yeah, and, and, and not, it wasn't just animators. I remember I had live action uh, friends, live action actors that were convinced in the 90s that uh, computer animation will become so sophisticated that so realistic that there will be no need for live action actors anymore. All, all actors will be synthetic in, uh, in, in movies. And uh, uh, what ended up happening was, were there 2D animators that were unable to adapt uh, yeah, uh, but um, there were also 2D animators that were able to adapt and they ended up having more vibrant careers than ever before. Uh, and more importantly, the, uh, the animation industry as a whole exploded. Uh, not only you had uh, uh, more studios and more professionals making fully animated films, but um, it, it also opened up this uh, uh, whole new visual effects market uh, for, for live action movies. All of a sudden, live action movies became more and more um, uh, full of uh, animation. That was all because of 3D technology. Uh, the, the, the animation industry has, has never been uh, this big. And it, it wouldn't be the case um, if it were not for these advancements. Yeah, but yeah, I think that's, that's people great. were I'm, freaking out in the nineties. At, at, at Lucasfilm, uh, when when we were told that we're not going to be storyboarding anymore for story development and that uh, we, we're going to do it all in three D, even even the director of the series was uh, uh, was uh, dejected <laughs> about <Yeah>. it. <laughs> so right. many of us couldn't couldn't see how how that could work, uh, uh, but it did. Uh, it, it did end up being um, uh, a much more powerful process. Yeah, and I, I bring this this comment up here from Gracie. Uh, the major thing Hi, right Gracie. now, it, yeah, if you can see this on screen uh, for those watching, the major thing right now is that people are losing their creative jobs because of AI. Directors can now use AI instead of storyboarders. So how do you think the future of story artists will be? And this is this is part of what we're we're going to get to uh, to the bottom of it. Because the other thing that I wanted to do here was uh, define what a storyboard artist slash filmmaker is and, and how this is going to happen with, uh, with the film industry. So, well, let, let's get to Gra Gracie's comment. Thank you for that, by the way, um, Gracie. Are, how many jobs have you seen going away? What's, what's the trend that you're, you're feeling out there with, with AI? I, I have not seen... Uh... I haven't seen storyboard jobs uh, go away yet, but maybe I'm missing something. If Gracie uh, knows of specific cases that uh, uh, I don't, uh, by all means, um, uh, bring my attention to it. Uh, but so far, the, the AI tools I have seen uh, are the kind of tools that are able to generate um, very impressive images and do some iteration on them, but I haven't seen them being able to iterate to the extent that uh, a production would need uh, during the process of uh, discovering um, um, great concepts to inform the, the production of a show. That I haven't seen yet, but maybe I'm missing something. If, if somebody uh, has examples um, to the contrary, please let me know. That it, it, does, it doesn't mean that this won't happen. Uh, right. It likely will uh, eventually, but uh, uh, again, going back to the original premise, what we also cannot imagine are the jobs and the opportunities that will be created because of it, which will likely be far more. 
how do you see that happening? What, what kind of jobs do you think will be created because we have AI art or AI storytelling? Well, one okay, can you say? I mean, it, that's something that's like a wild guess, right? It's a, it's a very wild guess, but uh, 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 I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have complained about um, um, creative stagnation in animation, right? And uh, nobody knows exactly. Well, one thing to say about that is, is that it, it turns out that uh, the um, creative, this kind of stagnation, uh, this, this, the, this slowing down in the rate of innovation is not just something that is experienced in the arts. It's also something that's experienced in the sciences as well as in the, uh, in the business world. And I, I don't know what's causing it exactly, but uh, no, I think anybody knows what's causing it exactly. But um, uh, when it comes to animation, I, I certainly don't think that it's because there is a lack of creativity or lack of uh, uh, great ideas. Um, it's, it's more likely, in my opinion, uh, that uh, uh, the solution to that type of stagnation is, uh, in, uh, is to be found in, in the business models, in the economics, and uh, in the production models and the technology that the creativity lives on that right now one could argue um, uh, can be stifling. And uh, the most stifling factor of all is, is the financial cost of these shows. Uh, it's, right. it's, it's, uh, it's, it, you, you, you cannot expect um, um, a studio, a team of artists uh, to be uh, bold creatively when the financial penalty for, for failing is, is so steep. Um, uh, look at how in, in uh, live action you have movies that cost $150 million, which is what's uh, typical in animation, but you also have movies that are made for $3, 5000000 million. And they're great movies. They do really well. They do really well financially. They do really well um, um, uh, creatively. Uh, in fact, you you see much more innovative storytelling uh, when it comes to the three to five uh, million dollar budgets than when it comes to the one hundred and fifty yeah. million. I budgets. always love those films because th to me, I, I like rooting for the underdog, and so those like independent movies that are really well done, yeah, and they're creative because they're using limited resources but doing it in a way that's new and fresh, right? And if you think of all the films that have been somewhat breakthrough films like uh, Evil Dead. For, you remember that film, uh, for example, you guys, the, the, the younger cats out there, you should go watch this movie. That's Sam Raimi and, you know, they would tie down a camera to a two by fours and they're running it through to create scary shots. And they're, they're doing yeah. wild and innovative independent movie things that now have become repeated and commonplace because at the time they were just being resourceful. Right. Uh, but in animation, you don't have that kind of range when it comes to budgets. Uh, animation is animation is mostly confined uh, to um, prohibitively expensive budgets, but yeah, prohibitively it's... prohibitively expensive budgets also means um, uh, less less creativity, less innovation, and uh, uh, only being able to address one type of uh, uh, um, audience. You cannot address niche audiences with movies that cost one hundred and fifty million dollars. So. If AI all of a sudden takes so much of the uh, technical, tedious, mundane, repetitive uh, tasks in animation and, and brings down uh, the cost significantly and opens up um, uh, creative innovation and the ability to address niche audiences, um, uh, how much more opportunity does, does, does that create? Hello? Hello. But uh, there we go. I, I wanted to bring this up from Nicolay. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, Most of the movies made in the last 10 years have been so formulaic that AI can easily make something like that even better. So hopefully we'll push people's creativity. It's kind of to your point, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, even, even more specifically, it's not, just, and I've seen that. I've seen that in, in startups. There are certain genres, certain storytelling products that are extremely formulaic and indeed, uh, um, uh, those now uh, can be fed into through uh, AI models that get you 70, 80% there uh, 
in terms of the final product and you just need a team to edit to do that final uh, editing pass, uh, polishing pass. Uh, but uh, the, again, there's a flip side to that. Uh, if, uh, if AI also uh, takes care of um, um, a lot of the more mundane and technical and expensive aspects of productions and brings the cost down, that opens up a whole other set of opportunities that is unimaginable right now. So if AI causes the animation workforce to be able to focus more uh, on the creative aspects of the craft. And uh, it enables us to address audiences that have never been served before and uh, allows us to be more creative because the total cost of production is, is lower. The financial risk is, is, uh, is uh, lower than that may end up being a, an incredible development. Yeah, I, I, I agree. That's, that's kind of a positive outlook on this. I just wanted to bring this up on screen. I did a quick web search, right? AI generated storyboards is the search I did here. And this is what first came up in, in my Google search. And these are pretty, pretty cool images, right? Wouldn't you agree that the... Yeah, the, 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 the images are, are uh, very competent for sure. But you know, uh, that's, that's not what storyboarding is. That's, that's what illustration is. To, to judge a storyboard, you got to see uh, how story beats and shots flow uh, through a sequence, right? Th that's exactly what I wanted to get to. What, how do you define? So what would you define a storyboard artist or a story artist, filmmaker? What do they do that this cannot replace? Like, what is the things that, like, you can have a pretty image, but does that make you a story artist? No, it's it's not it's not how pretty the uh, uh, the image is that makes you a story artist. Is uh, I think some uh, of how, these are pretty good. It's uh, first and foremost, it's how clearly can you communicate uh, a story to an audience. Ninety percent of story problems are communication problems, are clarity problems, right? Um, so, have I seen uh, 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 AI generated storyboards that read clearly? First and foremost. Um, even if the AI didn't come up with a story, even if the AI is just storyboarding over an existing screenplay, uh, can the AI um, tell a story clearly, a visual story clearly? I haven't seen that yet. Um, um, and um, uh, again, going back to the point of uh, sophisticated iteration, uh, can, can somebody go back and forth with uh, an AI storyboard artist and... Uh, uh, um, give the kind of subtle feedback that we're familiar with, right? Like, um, actually, the way they shot uh, this, the sequence is shot is is ominous. Can we uh, uh, make it uh, look uh, uh, more adventurous instead? Uh, make it not look dark instead? Um, uh, can we? Uh, this looks like a wide lens. Can we use a? a, a, a uh, a, a much longer lens. Um, can can it address feedback like that? I haven't seen evidence of uh, that kind of iteration that would be suitable for production. Yeah, I, I agree. Now, I'm bringing this up uh, from R here. It says, but doesn't the director do the flow and story beat? Surely a director just needs the AI to do the illustrating, right? It's, you know, why doesn't Spielberg just, uh, you know, he, he knows the shots. He, all he's got to do is just, plug it into AI and he's going to get those camera angles and he's going to get those, uh, you know, wide lenses and, and wide, let's say wide shots and close-ups. That's already baked in, right? Uh, yeah, it, it is possible to imagine in the future that, that Spielberg doesn't need storyboard artists to work with anymore. Um, he can just uh, go back and forth with an AI to flesh out a storyboard. <laughs> but, but, that, but that same technology uh, gives uh, more opportunities to more up until now, storyboard artists to be directors, right? Yeah, this is my, the point about it. It's like, there is so much that happens with story decisions. This is why a storyboard artist to me is a filmmaker. We are, I say this, we are mini directors. And, you know, I've seen Spiros do this. And, you know, we, we all kind of have that mentality where we, when you take hold of a scene, you own it because you have to make all of these decisions. I have not seen an AI example that can give you the emotional response that is required from 
the creative choices that you're making, not only in the way that you draw the scene, the choices that you're making with the camera, the writing decisions that you've come in, there are so many ingredients that are happening as a storyboard artist and filmmaker, I'll just, I'll just use that term, because you can use AI, and I think even storyboard artists can use AI as a tool, but then does that make it correct? Does that make it have the impact that you want? And I say, no, not yet. You still gotta have your brain turned on to create something magical. Right. And, and I will go further. And even when AI does become able to uh, uh, provide all that that's missing right now, uh, all the people that aspire to be storyboard artists right now, do you aspire to be a storyboard artist so that you're a storyboard artist your entire career? Or do you aspire to be a storyboard artist because uh, you, you uh, love telling stories to an audience? And if those same AI tools enable you to, they provide you with more opportunity to tell visual stories to an audience directly, uh, wouldn't that be desirable? Yeah, I agree. It's kind of like the reason we get into this, right? Do you get into this because you want to make money and you want to have a fancy trophy? Or do you get into this because when you wake up in the morning, you can't think of anything else to do but, but art and drawing and storytelling. And, and that, that's what I think is the difference between a robot and a human being with a soul, <laughs> for lack of a better term, right? I bring up David, uh, David's question here is, what might this do to draftsmanship and drawing? Would fewer and fewer people avoid drawing altogether? Well, maybe, right? But doesn't that mean you didn't like drawing in the first place? Uh, so there are, there are uh, technical tedious aspects to drawing and there are creative aspects to drawing. Well, actually, let me let me uh, uh, back up for a second. As, as a general rule, I'd say that the more a task is narrow and tactical, uh, the more likely it is that will, it will be eventually, uh, that eventually will be taken over by AI. But the, the broader uh, a task is, the more a task demands range, any strategic, then uh, the less likely it is that it will be taken over by, by AI. And when it comes to drawing in particular, there is a creative aspect to drawing and there is a, a technical aspect to drawing. Um, like that, that's why uh, in, in storyboarding, classically, you have the rough stage and the polishing stage, right? Right. <laughs> uh, there, is, there is the initial stage where you do all the, uh, um, all the story thinking uh, where you ensure that uh, the, the communication is there and, and you, you try to do that as quickly as possible with, with thumbnails. You don't need bells and whistles. You don't need uh, details. You certainly don't need uh, shading or, or a, um, a fancy illustration. Um, with thumbnails, very rough thumbnails, you can, you can flesh out how a visual story is going to be told. Uh, and then when that is approved in the context of, uh, of a studio, of a production, then you have to polish it, and which, is, which is, in my opinion, it's, I, I hated that part. Uh, that's, that's the robotic part, really. And yeah, that's where you like can kind of turn your brain off. I mean, who wants to do that uh, for, for years and years and decades? Uh, uh, just, just like make sure that uh, the, uh, the drawings are, are presentable and... Uh, um, and, and the competition in the industry would, uh, uh, over the years, uh, cause the standards of what is presentable to be higher and higher. When in, in the old days, uh, um, when, when yeah, in the old days, that the people would would say that this defeats the purpose. Uh, that the whole point of uh, storyboarding is to prototype the stories to as quickly as possible, as inexpensively as possible, prove that it works, and if it does put it into production. And, and uh, because nowadays with all the complexity, uh, executives are, are involved, uh, non-artists are involved in the process that uh, they, they need clear, uh, prettier illustrations in order to, to see the movie in their minds. They're not able to, to read roughs. Uh, uh, artists have to spend oodles of time, which is oodles of money, um, uh, uh, making these drawings, these storyboards pretty. But 
nobody sees that you know but nobody appreciates right the, this uh, is the this uh, is all it's not meant to be seen really storyboards and the thinking yeah. process the bulk of it happens when you're constructing the scene and thinking and so just to clarify is like i love drawing i love the drawing part of it but the like What's interesting thing as you go, when I first started out, I, th I was trying to be fancy and create cool images and stuff. But then as we get into this, right, Spiros, I discovered that it's less and less about the drawing. That's actually becomes less important. But what does become important is the decision making yeah. and the creative part yep. that you're doing and to your point of like solving those problems so that you can yeah. have a good film. Yeah, like I, I, I think one of the uh, best examples I have of this very point, uh, it was from Rebels, uh, and it has to do with Dave Filoni. Uh, it was it was the first episode of Rebels, I think. Um, uh, we had no time to prepare, and the, the the team and the production had to be put together very quickly. And and we jumped into the first episode, and uh, the whole thing was not uh, uh, in sync yet. Uh, even though so many of us were experienced people from uh, Clone Wars, as well as some new people that hadn't worked uh, uh, with the rest of the team before, there was a lot of confusion. And the first episode didn't come out the way um, uh, they wanted. And um, uh, uh, he was like, uh, well, let, let, let me show you how this should be shot. Oh, actually, it wasn't even the for, for the first episode. For the second episode, to avoid this happening again, he's like, he, he would typically not do that. But just this one time, in order to get the whole team synced up, um, he said, let me, let me show you how this episode should be shot exactly. Um, and then after we sync up our sensibilities, we can go back to uh, the more light-handed uh, approach that was, that was typical um, uh, at the studio. And uh, 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 Dave proceeded to, the, he, we were all in this uh, room with whiteboards all around and Dave proceeded script in one hand and a, and a Sharpie, not a Sharpie, a, a magic mark. Yeah, like uh, a on, on dry erase other. marker, right? Yeah, to like, like in one day, one day in front of us, live, thumbnail. He boarded out. The entire. The thing, the, the, the classic entire, way. The entire show all around the room in, in, in thumbnails. It was it was a, an extraordinary demonstration of uh, of uh, visual storytelling skill, and if you if you looked at these these marker drawings on the whiteboard, they were perfectly legible. You could totally see what all the storyboards uh, were, uh, what what the shots should be, um, uh, and and we we had to take the pictures from the board and flesh. Um, flesh this stuff out, like make it presentable for, for the story reels. But that was the, that was, that was the tedious part, what, what we had to do next. Right. What Dave was doing on the board was, was the thinking part, was the creative part. Right. So what uh, AI robot exists today can do that? What, which one? I'd love to see it. <laughs> so so, so uh, AI cannot do what Dave did in this example, but uh, and, and neither can AI do what... Uh, we had to do for that episode, which was to just illustrate uh, uh, these um, um, these, de these visual decisions. Uh, but uh, e eventually, I can see eventually AI being able to do that. But that's not necessarily uh, that may well be a net benefit uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, that may well, up, that may open up uh, uh, more opportunities for for people to do more creative work. To address more audiences that are, are unimaginable right now. That's interesting. That's very cool to think about. Uh, I just have a couple more prompts here that I wanted to bring up uh, quickly before we get to questions. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. By the way, the, the the chat is blowing up with a bunch of questions and and lots of conversation going on. But uh, legal implications of AI art. I, I've seen a couple of videos that artists have posted about. Uh, there was recently a ruling on the, the copyright office about. AI art in general. What do you think about this particular thing? Um, I guess to give a summary, uh, it seems as if the Copyright Office has has um, has not has not granted. If you produce AI art, that doesn't mean you get a copyright of it. It basically has to be manipulated by an artist or by a human being or a company, and then you can you can copyright it basically. Is that a good summary? 
Uh, yeah, that's a good summary. Um, I, I think it's a it's a good decision. Uh, it's it's a reasonable decision, but um, one should keep in mind that laws are, are a powerful thing at the national level. They're they're not that uh, effective at an international level. Yeah, uh, other, how much does it really matter, right? People are going to use right. it anyway, right? Yeah. So so. Uh, um, you, you can definitely impose these uh, in any type of law, including something like this. You can impose it um, on the American market in this example. But if if the same laws are not international, if there are countries out there, especially countries with uh, 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 large markets that don't have these laws, uh, then uh, then um, uh, uh, they they. If they don't have these restrictions, then they they could be progressing in a in a very different way than countries that do have these laws. And how that is going to play out, I don't know. Um, uh, it's it's a it's a complicated matter. But I, I I'm fairly certain that um, what what I can tell people is that just because these laws uh, apply to one country, that, that doesn't mean that it stops AI development in other countries that don't have these laws. Um, there is no way of enforcing them internationally. Right. <laughs> uh, okay, well, cool. How about we jump into some of these questions? I wanna pull this up. Um, and this is, this is great from Swarna here. Uh, AI tools cannot teach basics of storyboarding. Uh, I agree 100% with you, brother, and this is, I should bring this up too as a uh, as a shameless plug. I want all of you guys who are listening to this to come to our forums and we're on Discord. And if you go to this link, Storyboard Art slash forums, you're going to get to our Discord uh, channel and be able to sign up there. And if you're interested in this stuff, and the other thing is we have some free resources, come to this. There's an intro to storyboarding course that myself and the rest of our team put together. And this is free. And I think it will it will challenge you. And I've heard some really good comments that this is actually... Uh, more challenging than some of the Pixar free resources that have been out there, and so that's really nice to hear that. Uh, at least, at least we're on point when when it comes to you know helping people get some resources for for visual storytelling. But uh, uh, yeah, I I think the the training of this, if you really want to get into it, is uh, it's because you want to. This is something you should love to do, right? And and actually enjoy the filmmaking part, regardless of what kind of tools are out there right now. <laughs> uh, also, I would argue that uh, uh, the, the people that are going to be able to direct AI uh, doing storyboards the best are people that know how to do great storyboards. Yeah. Uh, let me bring this comment up here from Tyler. Uh, will AI give filmmakers the opportunity to shorten the length of a film is made? The, uh, yeah, that's uh, that, that's what we mentioned earlier. That's one of the uh, that's uh, a possibility, right? That's, that's one of the promises of AI. That's the promise, and of... and and we need it. I mean, is is anybody here happy with uh, um, uh, animated films costing tens of millions of dollars and uh, uh, taking four or five years to to complete? Like, is isn't it a good thing if? Uh, Animated shows cost less and uh, can be produced uh, in a shorter period of time uh, at, a, at a high production quality. Wouldn't that be uh, a boon for innovation in storytelling? Yeah, and to your point, what you said before is like every time we've had these innovations, whether it be photography or 3D animation or now AI, there has been more jobs and more industry creative because of it. Yeah. So uh, this this idea that we should initially fear this technology is is probably not accurate. I, I brought it's, this it's, up. It's, oh, it's, sorry. It's, it's it's both. I think, and th this this has been the, the the premise of technology since the invention of fire. Uh, <laughs> if if you if you if you use fire uh, the right way, it will cook your food and it will warm you up and it will bring the community together and it will encourage storytelling. And culture, uh, and if you uh, use fire the wrong way, it will burn your stuff down, right? <laughs> um, right. That, that same that same premise uh, hasn't changed for technology. It's just that technology has become uh, becomes uh, more and more powerful, and because of it, 
the, the benefits get bigger, but the risks can also become more destructive for sure. So I, I'm not here to uh, push uh, some overly optimistic view of AI. Uh, what, what my ultimate message is uh, based on the patterns from the past, um, uh, there are likely tremendous opportunities that people should uh, uh, um, be open-minded about and be ready to take advantage of uh, and embrace. But there will certainly be uh, uh, risks that need to be uh, mitigated. Yeah, uh, absolutely. This is great. So we just got a couple more minutes left. Let me see if I can fire through some more of these comments here from Christine. Uh, could it be possible that artists make money by selling their images to the pool that the AI harvests from? That's the, the people are already working on that. That's already in the works, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's already I, I could see that for sure. So yeah, that's, that's that might be the, one of those opportunities that you're talking about, like by yeah. producing artwork, it's like, and, and there might be another outlet that we can actually earn income because of the skills that we have. Yeah. And, uh, uh, uh this may have to, to do with uh, blockchain technology as well, like uh, 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 through blockchain technologies, um, um, maybe we'll be, we, we will be able to have more complicated uh, royalties uh, structures uh, where people give permission for their, um, their work to, uh, uh, to be used in whatever fashion, including for the training of AI. Uh, and uh, uh, you don't need a system with an army of lawyers and accountants to uh, keep track of uh, um, uh, what piece makes what money and whether the uh, ag agreed uh, cut from that revenue goes back to, to the artist. Maybe that, maybe that can be done automatically because of, uh, uh, because of these tools. But yeah, uh, very, very much something that, uh, uh, people, something that people are working on. Yeah, for sure. Um, another one from Art of Suspense. What modern studios currently promote creative storytelling and decision making above draftsmanship and rendering? Is traditional drawing still used in the industry? And I think people would be surprised, right, Spiros, how much traditional artwork is valued and necessary is still in all kinds of productions. I uh, I, I would also include their video games, you know, mobile apps, any kind of conceptualization. Who does that? It's creative people, right? Yeah. The, the, uh, uh, when it comes to visual storytelling, there is no substitute for, uh, there's no substitute for, uh, being able to, uh, communicate story beats through sketches, through rough, quick, clear sketches. That's a, that's an invaluable skill. That's, yep. that's, the, that's the most fundamental skill in, in this business, in my opinion. That's uh, probably in line with what Christine is saying here. Somebody said it before, but if AI uh, becomes the norm, the hand-drawn original will increase in value. It's why you pay more for a hand-thrown rug versus one uh, from a machine. I think got cut off there, I think. Uh, right, absolutely. That's why an original Monet will always carry a tremendous value versus you know, a replica. Uh, all right, this is one, just bring this up here too. Nina, I think it's all about speeding out the production process and lowering the cost in big studios. That's why I think AI is something that, that, that they will desire. Yeah, absolutely. The, you know, Spiros mentioned it. What's the average cost of a film nowadays, Spiros? Do you have any idea? Like a, a major animated production, for example. A feature? Uh, it's, a, it's about a, a million a minute. Uh, illumination illumination uh, uh, was uh, lauded for uh, being very innovative in, in its production process because it managed to cut that tremendous cost uh, in, in half, right? Which is still half a million a minute. But... Um, it, it, it's still a tremendously high cost. Like at, at that at that high cost, uh, you you cannot unlock uh, all sorts of opportunities that um, um, uh, are possible in live action, for example, uh, by comparison. Yeah. Well, let me bring this up. Here is our poll again. I wanted to mention this. If you guys are seeing us on the event page, we have a poll down below the chat, and if you hit that. 
it'll record your, your question and we'll bring up the, the answer there. But uh, I'll ask you, Spiro, so this is one of the poll questions. Are you in favor of AI in the art industry? And the way you're talking, I can almost uh, uh, predict the answer. But what do you think about this question? I, again, it depends. Um, I, um, um, I, I don't know, like everybody else, I don't know what the uh, full set of benefits and, and risks are yet. Uh, but uh, I, 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 I have just learned to be open-minded about technological breakthroughs because of everything uh, we have experienced in the past. Right on. And then the second question here in our poll, do you think AI will replace storyboard artists? Again, I don't know. Nobody's a prophet, but um, 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 the, the, the best way of answering this is, again, to make a distinction between the truly creative strategic aspects of storyboarding versus the tactical, uh, illustrative, uh, tedious aspects of storyboarding. And uh, uh, the latter is more likely to uh, be replaced by AI. Uh, the, the former will probably take a long while to do so. Right on. Okay, so let's get to the, the results of this just really quickly. And this is the informal poll that we have here. But uh, let me bring this up on screen and we'll get to some of the response here. So are you in favor of AI in the industry? It seems like the overwhelming response is 62% no and 37% yes. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's favor to the no, let's say. And then do you think AI... It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot better than uh, if you were... Uh, if you had taken that poll in the 90s about 3D animation or if you had taken, <laughs> or if you had taken that poll at Lucasfilm about Zeus. Yeah, I agree on that one. Do you think AI will replace storyboard artists? And then yes, 24.6% and no, 75.4%. So the majority of people say, say no on this one. <laughs> I, I think that, um, you know, the time, time will tell whether, you know, how the industry will change and and what will happen because of these things but uh are you know a couple last thoughts here spiros what do you think is a trend can you imagine what's going to happen in the next five years can you give us a little prediction i know it's 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 guessing at this point but okay five years from now we're going to have another chat we're going to bring you on again and what do you think has happened now in in the industry because of the the technology uh we, we already mentioned it uh, I think the uh, the cost of production will come way down. I think uh, uh, its its most uh, uh, tedious aspects uh, will be replaced by AI for sure. Uh, I don't know how much of its creative aspects, truly creative aspects, will be replaced by AI. Um, they, there will be disruption uh, in the industry. There, there may be loss of jobs, uh, but on balance, I also expect an explosion of uh, of jobs uh in the final analysis wow. i uh i i i expect an explosion of opportunities most of which are unimaginable right now just like the 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 current opportunities that we enjoy because of uh uh, uh digital filmmaking because of uh, 3d animation were unimaginable in the 90s when the technology first showed up for sure and I'll just put this last reminder for these guys watching. Thank you for joining us. We're almost at the end of this, this chat here. If you have any questions or any doubts about what you're doing and why you're doing it, and maybe you want to learn a couple of things, come join us on the forums there. And we're always open to uh, hearing people's responses or seeing artwork. So send us your artwork. You can email us at story at storyboardart.org. And uh, we love talking to people. And anyway, back to you, Spiros. I, I want to... Uh, point people to where they can find you. And you gave us the link to your website. Can I put that up on screen for everybody? Sure. Yeah. All right. So you can see Spiros at storybyspiros.com. But uh, what else are you, are you up to? What's, what's new on your plate? And, and what would you tell people to, I don't know, to go search you out? What are you going to be doing? Uh, well, uh, in the last three months, for the first time in my career, uh, I had, uh, I've had a couple of investors be interested in, um, uh, funding a company if I can come up with a compelling um, business plan. Um, that's, so that's what I've been uh, working on. 
Very cool. Well, awesome. Thank you, buddy. It's always super fun to have you and appreciate your comments and your insight. And man, I, I would say if anybody has a pulse on what's going on, it's you, my friend Spiros, because uh, I've seen you at the just cutting edge of technology and, and you've been right many times with these things. And so that's one of the reasons why I value your opinion so much, because uh, I, I think you have a, a certain talent for seeing what's coming in the future and, and that's that's really valuable for for artists to understand i i, I forgot to make a, a one very important point that uh, uh it's actually a point that i've been making over the years and you're, you're a witness to it more than anybody i think uh and uh it goes back to uh, what i mentioned earlier about um hyper specialization versus having range right um I'm sure many of you uh, have grown up, certainly I did, with the notion that the more hyper-specialized you are, um, the, the better your chances of, of excelling. And there's good reasons behind that. Uh, and, and it has been working um, as, as a strategy for, um, for, for a very long time. However, uh, I don't think people appreciate enough the the virtues of the strategic approach of having range of knowing uh the fundamentals of many things as opposed to hyper specialization and i get uh, the sense that going forward precisely because of these tools uh the uh, the approach of of uh having more range uh will be more beneficial than the approach of being a hyper specialist and uh, uh one thing i've certainly uh, seen the the art community suffer from is being too focused on uh, the artistic aspects of the business and not enough when it comes to the technological and and economic aspects of the business so that's my biggest encouragement to people out there is to expand their horizons beyond art beyond cre creativity because Art and creativity, when you do it for for a living, when you do it in the context of, of an industry, it doesn't exist in a in a vacuum. It doesn't it doesn't earn a livelihood uh, by itself. It has to work in context with all these other disciplines. And the more artists are educated and skillful in other disciplines uh, that affect their art, the better off everybody's going to be. Wow. Well said. You heard it straight from the master here. Thanks, buddy. That's really good advice. I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. All right, everybody. I think we're, we're going to do it now and we'll end on the Bumper Movie Hangout Spiros as you see this uh, go on and, and we'll chat afterwards. But big shout out to all you guys. Thanks again for joining and Thank good luck everyone. with everything and keep up the good work. We'll see you. Okay. Bye-bye.